A 24-hour race is held each year at Daytona since 1966. Simply called the Daytona 24, this event quickly became part of the history of endurance racing. The first edition saw Ford win the event with its all-new Ford GT40 Mark II. But Ferrari retaliated a year later, solidifying the three first finishing positions and ending the race in formation. Daytona and Le Mans are linked in more than one way and both events combined with the Sebring's 12 hours actually form the triple crown of endurance racing. Years have passed since Ferrari and Ford were battling for supremacy on the endurance scene. Nowadays, five classes of cars battle it out on track for a win in their respective classes. The track itself has stayed virtually unchanged since the first edition. The layout used for the Daytona 24 is partially run on the Speedway Oval which creates an interesting dynamic and gives faster cars a great place to overtake slower classes. A lap around the track will start on the oval. The first left-hander takes you on your way through the infield. After a couple of technical corners, it's back on the oval before you'll have to negotiate a very quick bus stop chicane that will finally bring you back to the start-finish straight. While the track is well lit thanks to the fact that it's on a permanent layout, because the race is held in January, the night is long and driver errors are frequent. Hi, my name is Carl and today we're checking out what it takes to win the Daytona 24. Here we are then at our very own Daytona 24. For obvious reasons, I'm not gonna race 24 hours in a row, although I think it's a brilliant idea and I might do it in the future. So make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I finally decide to do a full 24 hour race on my own. But today, we're gonna do a one hour race with a 24 time acceleration period to get that full Daytona experience, but not have to sit here for a full 24 hour. Anyway, let's get started. We're starting in the last place of our very own category, which is the DPI category, the top class at the Daytona 24 and the lights are on and they go off. Normally at Daytona, you would expect a rolling start, but in Asset of course, unfortunately, it is not a possibility. So we're just starting, well, kind of a little bit before the start finish line. And we want to take it very cautiously at the start of an endurance race because quite simply if you ruin it now you're gonna have to drag that deficit around for the whole race and you have more than enough time to make moves on your opponents in a 24-hour race the first hour of the race is just one hour we've got another 23 to make up for some lost time afterwards, so better be cautious at the start and then gain positions later on in the race. In any endurance race you're gonna reach a natural state of, of, of your team's pace and you're gonna end up where you should be anyway, so better just avoid any, any problems in at the start and Afterwards, just kind of make up for it once everyone spread out a little bit. But our start is not too bad for now. Still alongside each other. But it looks like we're not going to make the move stick for now. Other reasons why you don't want to mess it up in the first hour of the race are, of course, that. There's only one Daytona 24 a year. So if you want to win this race and you mess it up in the first hour, well, you're gonna have to wait another year before getting another opportunity as we outbreak ourselves a little bit here. I was scared from uh, the guy that was on our inside there and I wanted to give him more room than there was really. Thankfully, there's a bit of runoff on the first corner there. And then there's the fact that 
you're in team, so you have teammates coming after you and you don't want to mess up the car for your teammates after, that's not, that's not fair to them. So if you're ever doing a start to an endurance race, whether it be in real life or in sim racing, just keep that in mind, keep it cool, you'll reach the position that you deserve anyway at some point in the race, so just stay out of trouble, leave the troublemakers alone, let them be, they will take themselves out of the race at some point anyway, and just race your own race, as we're bound to make a move here now, and looks like the move is done, on this other Mazda DPI prototype. Now let's talk a little bit about the car that we're driving. We're driving in the DPI category, as I mentioned. That stands for Daytona Prototype International, I believe. And it's the top class in IMSA Racing, which is the, the championship that reigns over the Daytona 24. While we're talking about the IMSA, let's talk about the different categories that partake into the Daytona 24. First up, we have our very own category, which is the DPI category, the Daytona prototypes that I already talked about. This is the fastest cars that partake in the Daytona 24. And these cars sit somewhere in between LMP2 prototypes and LMP1 prototypes, having much more freedom in the design of the cars and the engine than the LMP2 category, but still being limited uh, as not to uh, overshoot the budget like LMP1s do. In our little Mazda, we have about 600 horsepower and a fair bit of downforce. I can tell you on the Daytona course, I wouldn't want any more than that. Next up, we have the LMP2s that we also knew from the Le Mans races is the second slowest car class in the Daytona 24, just like in Le Mans. Our final LMP uh, category, we have the LMP3s, which are even smaller, have even less downforce and less of a, an engine, less horsepower, as we say in the English language. Next up, we have our two GT classes, with first up the GT Le Mans, which is actually the same class as the GTEs we have here in Europe. They just use a different name in the IMSA. And then as the slowest category in the 24 hours of Daytona, there is the GT Daytona, which are the GT3s that we use here in Europe, like in the Blancpain GT3 series. We're gonna be able to Ooh. Didn't expect the AI to go that wide there. We're going to be able to keep our position. A little bit of rub in there. The AI has so much speed on the infield. We're just side by side for the whole infield. What a battle here. But we're in front now. Okay, that's another position done for us. Okay, that was very, very difficult. But we made it stick. Let's maybe get another move here before we catch up to the back markers. Because that's going to make it so much more difficult for us once we reach them. We're alongside this other car here. Not breaking him into the bus stop. And we make the move stick. That's two positions in one lap. Very good for us. On the inside of the Acura. Looks like we made the move stick for now. We're gonna have the speed for the Cadillac. Let's go down the inside. As we just catch up with the back end of the field. Oh, and the situation is getting very difficult already. You guys can see 
the speed difference between these cars is so big. Dealing with back markers is an essential trait of any endurance driver. With race length so long, you are bound to run into slower vehicles on track and you'll have to overtake them if you want to keep moving forward up the field. At Daytona, we also have five different categories, which means that some of the cars are actually designed to be a little bit slower than yours, which makes it even more difficult to deal with all of that traffic. When you're behind back markers trying to overtake them, you want to lose the least amount of time, but you also don't want to cause any trouble. That is the key to success you gotta judge in a split second whether you're going to pass someone or not. Now, as much as you don't want to lose any time behind these cars, it is the faster car's responsibility to find a spot where it is safe to overtake the slower cars in endurance racing. And so it is my responsibility to find the right place to overtake these people and to not cause any incidents And here, for example, not really gonna go for the move into the bus stop. I wasn't gonna try and outbreak anyone there, because that would have just messed up the whole situation. So I just waited around. Sometimes it's just, it just is faster to wait around a little bit before going for a move. Because you just know that if you get into an incident, oh, you're gonna lose so much more time than if you just wait around a little bit. But at the same time, you don't want to be too cautious. Because it has to be said, back markers do make you lose quite a bit of, of time. And here, for example, I got stuck behind Alexis. But there's nothing I can do. He's on track. He, he's racing. I'm racing. I can't just plow into him. Because, yeah, I'm going to ruin my race, but I'm going to ruin his race as well. And there's just no, no room for him to let me pass. So I just got to wait around for my time, be patient, and make the move once it's safe. The added power that I have does help me for that, and that's why it is the faster car's responsibility to make the overtake and to choose a right time. The slower car doesn't have to get out of the way. This isn't like in Formula 1 where a blue flag is mandatory, let the guy behind overtake signal. In endurance racing, the slower car's responsibility, the only responsibility they have is to keep their line and to not move away from it so that the faster car can safely overtake. I think we caught up to P1. There's two cars ahead of us. So hopefully Keep focused, I can catch him soon enough. Oh, he's stuck behind the Audi. Can we... Uh. We blocked him. I think that's the move done. We're into P1, guys. And just like that, his luck turned around, he got stuck behind Yardi, waited a bit too long, and that has promoted us into P1. Here we are then, we're gonna pit in at the end of this lap. And that's another very important part of endurance racing. Choosing your pit window, making sure all the pit stops go as planned. We're only gonna do one pit stop, but sometimes drivers need to stay in the car for two or three hours, and then they, they need to do multiple pit stops and make sure that all of them go as planned. That's a very, very stressful moment in the race, the pit stop phases. Sometimes you just need to do a driver swap so you have a little bit more time in the pits. But here we're just doing a splash and dash. You can basically win or lose the race in the pits by making right or wrong strategy calls. 
by um, missing your pit spot, by getting into another car that is um, getting out of the pit box. It's uh, a place that's very busy and strategy wise, you can't always do anything about it because you want to extend your stints as much as possible in endurance racing. And so you don't always have time to wait for another lap for the pits to be a little bit more empty. You just kind of have to deal with it. I think we've dealt with it pretty well. Of course, there are some other cars that haven't pitted yet. You can see we're now in 11th position. And hopefully we won't lose too much time by trying to ooh, we'll break ourselves. Ties are cold. And we lost yet another position, so we're in 12th. We're having to deal with these people that haven't pitted yet and we're probably going to lose a little bit of time. So that's the strategy aspect of, of endurance racing. If I had pitted a little bit later, maybe I wouldn't have had this traffic and I wouldn't have lost more time. So technically, technically that's a bit of a mistake on my part and I should have uh, risked going a little bit longer on that stint. So I was getting out of the pits. Oh, okay. We're actually, we, we actually managed to end up in front of him. That's good, that's another position we don't have to deal with later. Ooh, a lot of traffic here on this track. Right now, we're dealing with back markers, we're dealing with all the DPI and LMP2s getting into little fights as well. That's where you need to give everyone respect. Ooh. No! <laughs> oh god damn. I had to back out of it there. It feels so good to see the sun again. Not gonna lie, even when the track is so well lit, racing at night still plays a role on your psychology, on your state of mind while racing. So we're now alongside an LMP2 car. As you can see, we're the superior class here, but it doesn't mean that the LMP2s can't give you run for your money. Still we manage to keep in front for now. Or get back in front, let's say. We're in P5. So even with our little strategic mistake, we're still managing to get further and further up the field. Oh, a daring move from the AI there. Oh. Couldn't let him go. I had to go and uh, cross the grass a little bit there. Can we make it to P1, guys? I have no idea how far the guy in first is. I'm just pushing and giving it everything I got. And right now, we're, we're onto the podium, but that's not gonna be enough if we wanna win this race. We wanna. Oh. We wanna keep our positions as well because right now. We had taken the third place, but the AI is giving us a run for our money here. Oh, <laughs> thankfully those things are transparent. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to shift as well. Uh. God damn it, traffic is making it so difficult. We're taking all the wrong decisions here. God damn it. You're having to take rough decisions. Oh no, 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 no. God dang it, no. I hit a little bit of a patch of grass on the outside. It bumped the car up. And I think that's the end. That's the end of our podium position, guys. God damn it. All the way at the end of the race as well. We just pushed too hard to try and get there. I should have just waited a little bit longer. 
And that is exactly what I was saying earlier. You need to wait for those opportunities to come and not try and force yourself to get ahead. And that might be what costs us the, po the podium, guys. The two last laps of the race. The P4 seems like the likely result for us. One last time, we're coming into the start finish straight. And that's the end of it, guys. That's our race over. Finished fourth. And I had a lot of fun in that, not gonna lie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well and you learned something from this. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you are still here at this point in time, that means that you really enjoyed it. And so I have another video recommendation for you guys. Check out the Daytona 66 race we made yesterday, trying to replicate the very first Daytona 24 that was ever held with a 4GT battling some Ferraris. That was a lot of fun and you'll definitely enjoy it. Also make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. It's all free and you can unsubscribe at any point in time if you don't like my content anymore. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you space races next time. Goodbye.